Welcome to Practicing Resilience, Improving Your Ability to Bounce Back from Stress. This presentation is brought to you by Wilderness Chaplains, a nonprofit organization dedicated to bringing crisis interventions, training, and response to wilderness first responders and the communities they serve. Before we begin practicing and improving our resilience, let's make sure we're on the same page about what it means. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from a difficult or adverse situation or experience. Some people think of it as being like Gumby, little cartoon character who you can move or bend and comes back to the shape he was to begin with without being harmed. Resilience is an ordinary skill that most people do naturally. Chances are if you've come this far in life, you've been practicing your resilience skills, even if you're not always aware that you're doing it. And what's awesome about resilience, it's not something you have to be naturally gifted in. It's something that can be developed and strengthened in anyone over time and with the right ideas. That's the goal of this course today, is to look at some of the ideas to build and strengthen our resilience that you can put into practice starting now. If you're like me, you've had some ways of coping with stress that were healthy and some that were less than healthy. For the sake of this presentation, we're gonna stick with the healthier and positive ways of dealing with stress. So take a moment and think about what you do that's a healthy thing to cope with stress. Does it maybe involve something you're eating or drinking or consuming? Does it have to do with your physical body, with being active, with exercise? Or maybe it's something to do with relaxing, reading a book, watching TV, doing something for your brain to get your mind off of it. In the upcoming sections, we're gonna look at specific activities that can help us cope with stress and build our resilience against stress. These are some starting ideas to get your brain working. If you'd like, you can take a moment to write down some other ways you cope with stress, as these could lend insight and be helpful later on in the presentation. One approach to studying resiliency is to look at it in terms of the four quadrants, body, mind, heart, and spirit. Go ahead and write this down on a piece of paper, or just sit back and engage with it, whatever you prefer. We're going to go into a little more detail with each of these quadrants and take our time exploring each one and thinking about how we can specifically start acting or changing things to build resilience in that area. What's nice about these quadrants is it can be a good check-in tool, so from time to time you can map it out and say, how am I doing in the quadrant of body? How am I doing in the quadrant of spirit? How am I doing in heart and mind? You'll see what this looks like as we go, but something to start thinking about now is how you can use it in the future. The first quadrant we'll look at is the body, or the physical. This is the one you're probably the most familiar with, because we hear all the time that we should make sure we're eating right, sleeping right, exercising, taking care of our bodies. Why is this important in responding to a stressful situation? Well, if you think about it, most stressful situations come with some kind of adrenaline response, meaning you feel the urge to fight, fly, or freeze. All three of those take energy, and that means using your body. Or maybe you're going through an event that's gonna cost you sleep because you have to be up taking care of things, or you're now suffering anxiety and can't sleep, or you're so busy you're out in the field or somewhere where you don't have resources and you're not able to hydrate or eat at the time. Wouldn't it be great if your body was in tip-top shape before you got into that situation? If you were already full on food, on water, on sleep, and you had enough extra to give? Trying to keep ourselves in that peak operating position can pay dividends later when we're faced with stressful situations. Now it can be overwhelming to think about this in the big picture, so let's look at some little ways we can improve our resilience when it comes to our physical selves. Instead of worrying about, I need to get enough sleep, take an action step like setting a bedtime reminder on your phone or calculating out what time you need to go to bed every night to get an adequate number of hours of sleep. Instead of telling yourself, oh, I need to drink more water, get up and fill a water bottle or a glass and keep it by your workstation during the day. So every time you look at it, you think, oh, I should take a sip. That'll help with building hydration habits. Set exercise goals at what works for you, whether it's two hours at the gym or a 15 minute walk around the block, but get moving, that's important. Set appointment reminders so you don't miss important things like doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, etc. And considering using any benefits you have or finding ways to engage in good self-care practices like meditation, yoga, getting massages, even going and getting your hair cut or your nails done. All of these are ways to take care of your body. The second quadrant we'll look at is the mind or the thinking and cognitive domains. This is another one you've probably heard about. 
most of us here, we need to keep our brain sharp. We need to keep thinking and stay mentally active, especially as we get older. It's incredibly important when it comes to managing stress too. Just like our bodies will be called on to operate in high capacity when something bad happens, our minds will too. We'll be processing new information, we'll be dealing with a lot of incoming information at once, and we're probably going to have to stay focused for a longer period of time than we're usually used to. Wouldn't it be great if our minds were ready to go whenever that happened? Well, they can be. Here's some ideas, and you can think of your own as well, for how to keep that mental sharpness going and improve your resilience. Consider doing daily puzzles. Whether that's a crossword, a Sudoku, an actual physical puzzle you put the pieces together, something that gets your brain clicking, looking for problem solving and patterns. Schedule practice sessions with yourself or with others for skills that are perishable or that you want to be able to excel at and think through. This could be thinking through a worst case scenario or it could be practicing tying knots and maybe even driving skills in the winter. Engage in regular reading. That doesn't have to necessarily be a really long book. It could also be an article, a blog post, even someone's tweets or something on social media that gives you good new information to think about. Processing new ideas, learning new facts, and delving into new ideas that you haven't looked at before is a really great way to get your mind going. Having discussions about what you're learning, even better. When you can share that information with someone else, answer their questions, and come up with new ideas processing the information. One thing that's incredibly beneficial is taking time to do grounding or meditation. Now, a lot of people get freaked out when they hear meditation because they think it's going to take hours and hours of their time. But honestly, you can do five and 10 minute meditation sessions using apps on your phone or web-based resources that talk you through how to do square breathing or tactical breathing, looking around at the things around you, going outside and engaging in forced bathing. There's all kinds of things you can do that count as meditation and are beneficial for the mind. So don't let the word meditation scare you. There's plenty of ways to do it that don't take up much time and don't take a lot of effort to learn. The third quadrant, the heart, is more about interpersonal connections and relationships than about feelings and emotions. While those are important too, we're specifically looking at building resilience. And to do that, we need a strong interpersonal support system and people in our life who we can turn to when things go badly. Now it's easy to think, great, I need to develop my relationships or get new relationships Etc. But how do we actually do that? Well, here's some suggestions, and hopefully you can come up with more on your own. First, know about boundaries. Know what your boundaries are and what other people's are. Know how to respect them. Know what's a no-go. Know what's needed to feel loved and appreciated. Know how to respect someone and have them respect you. If you're not clear on this, it's difficult to maintain healthy, stable relationships. Make sure you have friends and people you talk to outside of work. This can be people online who you game with, people you see as regulars at a coffee shop or bar, or an actual circle of friends that's outside of your work circle. This is especially important for those who work in first responder or high stress fields because it's easy to get surrounded by the same people in the same experiences with the same perspective. Sometimes we need friends and coworkers outside of our immediate sphere who can give us a different perspective and remind us that there's other ways to the world and other experiences that can be had. If you're able to ask for feedback, this can be an incredibly valuable tool to use to strengthen relationships. Know your boundaries though, because if you ask someone for feedback and all they do is berate, criticize, or put you down, that might not be a good relationship to be in. Asking for feedback in terms of how your communication style is working or what someone's love language is and if you're meeting their needs can really help to strengthen and grow a relationship. Just make sure you're in the right mindset when you ask for it and you're willing to listen. Notes and tokens may not take the place of you actually being present, but if you can't because of schedules or commitments, these can be helpful. Sometimes it's writing that love note and sticking it on someone's desk or putting it in their lunch. Sometimes it's leaving a smiley face or some kind of post-it note with a positive message for someone. Little tokens like a gift from a trip or seeing a rock or a shell and thinking of someone and wanting to put it out for them, picking a flower or getting an extra piece of dessert at the restaurant Anything like this can be a good gesture of affection, a token of appreciation, something that makes someone know you were thinking about them, even though you weren't necessarily there the whole time. And finally, when you're able to make time, it's really easy to let our priorities get the better of us if we're not prioritizing our relationship. Everything can seem more important than the people in front of us, but we need to make time for the people who matter because we want them to make time for us when we need them to be there. 
So in quadrant three, we talked about external relationships. Now in quadrant four, we're going to look at the spirit and talk about our internal relationship, our soul, our relationship with ourself. Now this can be a little bit trickier to delve into, but bear with it. Hopefully it makes sense by the end. When we go through a really dark time or stressful situation, it's not uncommon to feel a sense of loss, questioning everything, not knowing yourself anymore. That is why it is so valuable to get to know yourself before you get in those situations, to have a strong sense of who you are and why you do what you do, to fall back on and cling to when everything else seems to be in chaos. So how do you do this? Well, first, get to know yourself better. Figure out what drives you, what motivates you, what gets you up in the morning. Get to know your purpose. There are some amazing authors, professional speakers, inspirational quotes, all kinds of resources out there to help you look into this. I recommend checking some of them out. Look for inspiring stories, especially when they have something to do with the field you work in or what you do for fun, especially outdoors. It's good to read about how people have overcome insurmountable obstacles and survived worst case scenarios because it teaches us that we too can get through those situations if something bad happens. By exposing ourselves to positive outcomes and role models who have gotten through something, we're mentally preparing ourselves for the strength to get through it too. Hopefully we never have to do it, but it's good to have that knowledge in hand beforehand. Find ways to experience wonder. Whether it's seeing the beauty in nature, a scenic vista of the colors in a flower, reading something new, hearing an amazing piece of music, find ways to generate emotional responses in yourself. It's good to have time to connect with yourself, know what you're feeling, have those reactions. Whether it's from going outside or sitting on your couch, find a way to experience awe, wonder, gratitude, joy. Make time for faith. Whether your faith comes from organized religion or your faith comes from seeing acts of good in humanity, make time for it. Go to church. Meet with a group of like-minded friends, volunteer, go spend time in nature, and connect with something bigger than yourself. Whatever way you find to express faith or experience something outside yourself that connects you with the world and with others, make time for it. Because we need to know that we're not alone in our beliefs, in our values, and in what matters. And finally, create opportunities for accomplishment. It's really important to build up some wins in our lives. If we always think that we're failing, always have negative self-talk, it's really hard to get through bad situations. So create opportunities to do well. Find something you can be grateful for every day. Keep a gratitude journal. Ask someone to tell you what they appreciate about you. Make a list of things you've accomplished. Sign up for an online course or certificate program or some kind of project that you can actually do from start to finish and say, I did that, I accomplished that. Creating those little wins help us get in the belief that we are capable of winning and will make us way better able to believe in ourselves and get through a bad situation when push comes to shove. There you have it, the four quadrants of building resilience. In review, they are the body, the mind, the heart, and the spirit. Now it's up to you how you're going to use this next. Take a screenshot of this or picture with your phone and keep it as a note to check in on yourself. See what you're doing regularly to benefit these quadrants and build your resilience. I've heard some people like to shade them in from time to time, kind of a visual check-in. My body quadrant is full, my mind quadrant is full, but my heart and spirit quadrants are a little bit lacking. I'm gonna focus on those next. Or, you know, I've been focusing so much on a few things that I lost track of the others. Time to rebalance and refocus. The more we can work on each quadrant, and the more we can work on all four of these quadrants, the better we will be at handling stress and improving our resilience for stressful situations. Now that we've looked at building and improving our resilience through the four quadrants, what happens next? Well, that's up to you. I encourage you to choose at least one next step or decide what you're gonna do with this information because statistically speaking, you are very likely to forget everything you've heard if you don't do something with it or putting it into practice. So what are some possible next steps? Well, start now. Develop good habits and best practices to be ready for when a stressful situation happens. Whether you use this tool or a different tool, start to think about what you wanna improve or do differently. It will help. If you feel like you've got this nailed down, solid, you know all the information, that's awesome. Think about how you're gonna model it or help others practice and improve their resilience. A great way to spread knowledge is to share it with others. So consider how you can do that. Also, 
do a self check from how from time to time on how you're doing. Whether that's using the quadrants as a tool or just thinking about it or putting it in your own words, check in on yourself. Sometimes we can fall into routine and miss the fact that an area of our life is slipping until it's too late. The final thought I'd like you to leave with is the knowledge that you can strengthen your ability to bounce back and you can even do it so well that you develop immunity to stress. Hard to believe, but there is research that supports this notion and I highly encourage you to take it to heart that not only can you improve your resilience, but you can make it so strong that stress can't even get through. Thank you for attending this presentation. Consider visiting us at wildernesschaplains.org to learn more about our organization. And please consider making a donation to support this and future trainings like it.